start off the presentation with a, uh, a quick demonstration. There's a slight bit of latency between the device and uh, what you're seeing there on the TV uh, due to transmission over Wi-Fi. I won't knock the uh, the boss off the perch. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, we've we've got a uh, a plane here with the SSW logo and the the cubes that we uh, we had up there um, uh, with faces on, and I was able to throw uh, virtual SSW balls at them. And you might notice where I'm looking over there. That's uh, oops, that's my job gone. Uh, the balls are rolling on the floor and there's uh, Adam's cube on the floor there. And I can use a speech command, reset scene, reset scene, and we've reset back to the beginning. Later on in the presentation I'll, uh, I'll take you through how that demonstration is put together. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to HoloLens, a world where anything is possible. And thanks so much for, uh, for coming along to the presentation tonight. A little bit of housekeeping first. Uh, so we've got toilets. There's uh, uh, one toilet here, and just around the corner there's a, another toilet. Uh, exits at the back of the room, and another one down, uh, down here if you need to get out. So my name's Stephen Carter. I work for SSW in Melbourne. I'm the Victorian State Manager and I'm also a Senior Software Architect. I've been with SSW now for about three months. Uh, prior to that, I was working for the rail company in Melbourne as their head of ICT projects. And uh, I came into that job from being in a project management background. Uh, and prior to that, I was a, a software engineer. Um, being in PM work and a managerial role, I really miss the, uh, the technical hands-on side. And so being here at SSW, I'm able to get my hands on things like the, uh, the HoloLens. Uh, my Twitter handle is uh, Stavros the Geek. Um, uh, my, my nickname is Stavros. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll put that up on my blog. My partner is sitting at the back of the room, but just very briefly, uh, her, her children nicknamed me Stavros. So. Um, so I invite you to join the conversation with the, uh, the, Twitter, uh, the hashtag of, of HoloLens and uh, tagging me at uh, Stavros the Geek. Um, I've got a, a LinkedIn profile. Uh, I also have a, a photography site on, uh, on Flickr and uh, my blog is at stavrosthegeek.com. Uh, it's probably not up tonight because the, the DNS was uh, only put through this afternoon, so give it a 24 to 48 hours to, to filter around the net. Um, I'm pretty lucky to have the opportunity to talk to you about HoloLens tonight. Uh, out of all the geeks that work here at SSW, uh, Adam chose me, so I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to get to work with this device. But that is until I found out I had to write rules to better HoloLens development. <laughs> so a little bit about me. I'm a, a bass player. Uh, apart from that, I'm reasonably normal. I like to go mountain bike riding with my son and our favourite uh, area to cycle around is in the Yu Yangs to the west of Melbourne. I'm an amateur photographer and uh, I, I love travelling around Southeast Asia and shooting around there. I've also photographed a number of uh, events uh, and festivals um, and as you saw before I have a, a Flickr site. I'm a, a wannabe culinary master as well. 
Um, the photo on the left there is of my children and I in, uh, in Bali on Christmas Day in 2012. We went to a, a cookery school there. My daughter and I have a signature dish, a, a beef rendang that we cook from, uh, from scratch with all fresh ingredients. Um, and that's the photo of it on the right. It takes about 24 hours to prepare and cook slowly. And uh, my partner's uh, uh, keeps on saying that my strategy to get people to like my food is that it takes so long to cook it that by the time I serve it, they're starving and so they, they think <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> uh, today, uh, we're going to cover uh, a fair bit. We're uh, going to start with a surprising history of the hologram. Then we're going to look at some specifications and other juicy bits commercial uh, applications of the HoloLens and some fun applications as well. And we're going to do a, a, another demonstration of a, 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 an application which has uh, been released for HoloLens. And then we're going to go through how I put together that demonstration uh, and show you how you can get started with HoloLens development. What you're going to walk away from uh, with from today's uh, presentation is a, a live demonstration. So not many people have these and not many people get to see them in real life. You're gonna see the examples of uh, commercial HoloLens applications. And what I hope to do is to get your minds ticking with, with the possibilities uh, of uh, HoloLens applications and think about how they might be applied to your workplace or your customers' workplaces uh, because the, the applications are, are just massive. So we're going to get started with the, uh, the surprising history of holograms. So who here knows uh, the first reference to a, a hologram in fiction? Yes, sir. Babylonia. Babylonia. And uh, is that a, a novel or a film or? It's um, on the clay tablets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the Epic of, Gil of Gilgamesh. Okay. I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. Okay. But the, uh, I'll write about it on my blog. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll see you afterwards and I'll get your, your blog address. I'm, I'm keen to see that one. So my research revealed it was in 1893, but I think the Babylonian times go back a bit further than that. This is paper and print. It was in Jules Verne's novel, The Carpathian Castle, which uh, features the projection of a man made out of the lights. Although it's not a, a, a hologram or called a hologram in the novel, it, it is a hologram nonetheless that they're describing. And moving on through history, in 1947, the holographic method was invented by physicist Dennis Gabor. That's uh, some 50 years after uh, Jules Verne's novel was released. Uh, who here knows when uh, a hologram was first used in film? Yes. Star Wars? Star Wars? Ah, that's good. Uh, a good guess. It's um, actually in 1956 in the Forbidden Planet where Dr. Morbius speaks to his daughter via hologram. I've got a quick clip of that here. What's that? What's happening there? A statue. That's Altera. Simply a three-dimensional image, Commander. So it's still not referred to as a hologram, a three-dimensional image, but as you can see there, it, it's clearly a hologram. And in 1962, uh, optical holograms uh, recording three ob 3D objects um, were invented after the uh, development of the laser. In 1971, Dennis Gabor, who invented the holographic method, won the uh, Nobel Peace Prize for, uh, for physics. I know we've got one person in the audience here, but uh, who else has seen Star Wars? Okay. 
So we've got a, a few people that haven't. Do you guys work? <laughs> do you guys work in IT? I all right. <laughs> so yeah, Star Wars uh, first came out back in 1977 and uh, and featured hollow chess. Now be careful, R2. <laughs> You made a fair move. Screaming about it can't help you. Let him have it. It's not wise to upset a Wookiee. But sir, nobody worries about upsetting a droid. That's because a droid don't pull people's arms out of their sockets when they lose. <laughs> so a game like this is now completely feasible with HoloLens and I wouldn't be surprised if someone's working uh, on this game right now uh, and we see it released for HoloLens in the not too distant future. And we have the all famous line from, uh, from Star Wars. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. All right, now what do I click? Click Preferences. Okay, I clicked Preferences. Now go to Default Media Browser. Okay, there's a little hourglass and it's, it's not letting me do anything. It, it says buffering. What is that? Just give it a minute. But all I'm trying to do is make an MPEG. All I'm trying to do is tell you to wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I'm sure those of you who have worked in support positions can uh, sympathise with R2 there. Like most technologies, they started with someone's fictional vision and holograms and the HoloLens uh, are no different. In 1983, we had MasterCard start using holograms for uh, credit card security. A year later, the UN started to use them on their passports. Now looking at the history of HoloLens itself, the information I've been able to dig up, and it's quite sketchy, is that it was conceived prior to the uh, Connect pitch that Alex Kipman did to Microsoft back in 2007. And then Connect was released in 2010 and then in uh, 2010, uh, Project Baraboo started, which was the HoloLens project. And then it was announced, the HoloLens was announced by Microsoft in January 2015. And then we get our developer edition come out in, uh, in March this year. Looking at the, uh, the timeline there, we've got all the way back to 1893 with the uh, Carpathian Castle and going through 47 with the holographic method, 56 Forbidden Planet, optical holograms in 1962, 1971 the Nobel Peace Prize for Physics, 77 Star Wars came out, 83 MasterCard started using holograms, 84 the UN holograms for passports, in 2007, the uh, HoloLens was conceived, or the idea for it. And then in 2010, Project Barbaroo, or the HoloLens project, kicked off. And Microsoft announced it in 2015, and here we are in 2016 with the, uh, the device in our hands. So this is Alex Kipman who invented the HoloLens and also the uh, Connect for Microsoft. Uh, and there his words that you saw up just then. And that translated is, we used to uh, computing on a screen, entering commands on a keyboard, and cyberspace was somewhere else. Computers responded to programs that detailed explicit commands. In the very near future, you'll compute in the physical world using voice and gesture to uh, summon data and layer it atop physical objects. Computer programs will be able to digest so much data 
that they'll be able to handle far more complex and nuanced situations. Cyberspace will be all around you. That's a pretty powerful statement and, uh, and this is one of the reasons why I see HoloLens as a, a complete game changer for us in the IT world. Moving on from uh, history, let's get into some specifications and uh, the nitty gritty of, uh, of HoloLens. But who here thinks that uh, HoloLens is virtual reality? Nobody. Ah. And who thinks it's augmented reality? Okay, the majority of the audience. It's actually mixed reality. You might be asking what's the difference between that? Virtual reality is a, a fully immersive experience where everything that you see is, is virtual or computer generated and simulated. This video uh, demonstrates that and if, if you check out the guy on the left playing a uh, virtual reality Paul, you see he's, he's fully immersed in his environment and believes that there's an object in front of him the pool table and therefore he, he, he stumbles. Augmented reality on the other hand is uh, generally only a single point of view or a monoscopic view. It's not a fully immersive experience uh, and the real world is supplemented with uh, computer generated objects. Uh, examples of uh, augmented reality devices are Google Glass, uh, smartphones and tablets. Uh, and going back to the virtual reality devices, we, we have things like Samsung Gear VR and Oculus Rift. This video demonstrates so you can augmented clearly reality. See it's, it's actually just visible on the screen and it's generated from the, from the live view, uh, within the live view of the, of the camera. So you note there that he's, he's seen the augmented reality through a, a 2D surface, his, his smartphone, uh, and that that reality is overlaid onto the paper which is sitting on the table. Mixed reality, on the other hand, which HoloLens is, is a seamless merging of uh, real and virtual objects. Uh, and what's great about the HoloLens is that it analyzes your environment. It does spatial mapping, so it's completely aware of, uh, aware of everything around you. That giant cat you've always wanted and actually I found a grumpy cat app today so you can have your pet grumpy cat sitting on your table. Kitten Kong. Kitten Kong is it? <laughs> so what's under the hood of HoloLens? You see from the, uh, the tear down there that it's packing a lot into a, a small package. So let's take a look inside. In the, uh, the optics cluster we've got uh, an initial measurement unit. That's got a, an accelerometer, a gyroscope and a magnetometer in it. And that measures your head movement and works with the uh, processes to keep the holographic images stable in your environment. And one of the surprising things about wearing HoloLens is that you can shake your head from side to side quite quickly and holograms stay rock solid uh, anchored in space. We have uh, uh, two light engines that um, uh, project the photons into uh, the holographic lenses. Now the resolution of HoloLens is specified as high definition. Um, it, it can't be specified in terms that we're used to like 1080p or 720p. 
um, because of the uh, the pixel density that is in it. it it's a very different way of, of uh, looking at graphics. Uh, and then we have the, uh, the holographic lenses there. Now, to create hollow lenses images, light particles bounce around millions of times in the light engines and then the photons enter the lenses where they ricochet between layers of red, green and blue glass before they reach the back of your eye. In the sensor cluster we've got a depth camera there, which is basically a, a connect camera. Um, it's got a field of vision that spans 120 by 120 degrees with a range of approximately 3.1 metres in front of you, which is more than the original Kinect. Uh, and it can clearly see what your hands are doing even when they're fully outstretched. There's a, a 2 megapixel photo and high definition video camera. Uh, ambient light sensor and four environment understanding cameras and they're responsible for doing all of the spatial mapping together with the Kinect camera. And that's what sets uh, HoloLens apart is, is its spatial mapping and environment understanding. On the motherboards there's a, an Intel 32-bit processor and a, a custom-built Microsoft holographic processing unit capable of processing over 200 unicorns per second. Now, seriously, though, it's uh, it's rumoured to produce uh, to process a trillion calculations per second. So, massive amount of power in a small device. Yes, Ruby. Very good question. Um, so, I'll repeat the question. Um, what's the comparison to a, a, a computer? So. Uh, I'm not sure with today's uh, processors, but so th th this has got a, a GPU, uh, the HPU and the 32-bit processor in it. The, the sensors in this device um, flood the units with uh, terabytes of information every second. So to look at it in those terms, Ruby, um, terabytes of information every second is a massive amount of data coming in to, to be processed uh, in a smooth way. Um, I, I don't know how to put it in terms of, of percentage, but uh, th this type of processing, processing is very different um, because of all the, the sensor data coming in. But I'll, I'll make a note and I'll, uh, I'll have a look and see whether I can find a comparison for you after the presentation. The uh, operating system, it's a, uh, a Windows 10 device with 64 gigabytes of flash memory on board. And at first I thought that was a little bit on the low side, but then when I started getting apps, they're remarkably small for applications that have so much graphics information in them. Uh, for example, one of the apps that I'll, I'll demonstrate a little later is a, a, a Galaxy View and that application is below 500 megabytes. There are other graphics applications that I've downloaded that are, are sub 50 megabytes, so very low. We've got two gigabytes of RAM on board. The, um, the weight is 579 grams. Uh, there's quite a bit packed in for that. And uh, wearing it for a while, I find it quite, uh, quite tiring. Uh, and I can imagine if you're wearing it for an eight-hour day, you might end up looking like a, a rugby player with uh, large neck muscles. Um, the, the thing I can compare, compare it to is I, I did a motorcycle tour of, of Cambodia last year, and after an eight-hour ride, taking a helmet off is a huge relief. Uh, and wearing HoloLens for me at the moment uh, is a similar relief when I take it off. Uh, about four hours, Adam. Yeah, I, I couldn't imagine wearing it for a, a, a full eight-hour stretch of a day. You, you need to take breaks. Um, battery life uh, is two to three hours of uh, active use. Uh, but it, it's got a, a micro USB um, adapter in it, so if you don't mind a cable dangling down your back, you can uh, charge it while using it. Let's have a look at some commercial applications. 
First of all, uh, Chris Capicella, one of the uh, big wigs at uh, Microsoft, said, uh, we talked a lot about, is this our iPhone type moment? Meaning you sort of surprise the world with something that's very complete and ready to go at scale. A and when I first touched one of these, I was amazed that a developer edition is, is such a, a finished product. And um, yeah, it's remarkable what they've done. Perfect. It turned out perfectly. In fact, if anything, HoloLens has gotten much bigger than we intended. It's become humongous without selling a single <laughs> unit. And that's actually a problem. Like we one yeah. time gadget of the year. So the um, interest in HoloLens has really surprised Microsoft. It was originally developed as a, a gaming device and then they realised the uh, commercial applications for it and the commercial applications of uh, uh, an interest in it has completely overtaken the, uh, the gaming side. And so Microsoft are, are focusing uh, predominantly on the, uh, the commercial side or business use of it. So one of the applications you can use it for is a virtual office. Um, so at, at $3,000 for the, uh, the development version of this, um, who here would spend that kind of money to get one? Robert. Okay, so we've got uh, about three people in the audience. But originally I thought $3,000 was a bit on the heavy side, but if we consider just the virtual office side of things, if you buy a, a laptop and a monitor, and you uh, get office decor, and it doesn't take long to reach $3,000 of spend. The, the HoloLens is a, a completely untethered, self-contained PC. You can set up multiple holographic monitors in it, and with just a desk and a chair and a wireless keyboard and wireless mouse, you can get to work. You can remote desktop into virtual machines, and off you go. Now you can see all my uh, virtual desktop, my virtual office. Now, if I want to be really productive, I need a keyboard and a mouse, okay? So here I've got my wireless keyboard and a mouse, and all of a sudden, boom, I ha this is exactly like a computer right in front of me. I can do my work. I can uh, even have multiple screens, but for now I've got one screen open, Somebody else might not see anything. It might just be, be an empty office, but to me, it's filled with my workspace holograms. So now I want a second screen for my Surface. So I'm putting my Surface out here and I can readjust the size of the hologram. I can place it wherever I want so that I can have multiple screens to an actual device. So it can be its own screen, it can be its own dedicated PC, or you can use it as a second screen for your other devices this is amazing, okay? This is amazing. I've got a whole, I can decorate my entire office if I wanted to. I just have a few things shown here. And again, it's just blank and it's all holograms. This is an empty office space. How's that? Uh, there's a pretty stark contrast between seeing him sitting at a desk with a keyboard and mouse like he's staring into space and, and then what he's seeing through the, uh, the hollow lens. Is it? Looks a little low res. Yeah, but surely it's a bit higher res than. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the question or the, or the statement was that uh, it looks a little bit low res on the on the screen, but uh, surely it's higher resolution on the device. It is that the, the uh, resolution is astonishing, and I think the uh, the video that I downloaded for this uh, is the reason why the resolution looks a, a little bit uh, dodgy. Um, yeah. Look the. As I said before, that the resolution can't be classed in terms that we're, we're usually uh, or used to using, um, but it's high definition. So it's absolutely crystal clear. There's, there's no blockiness or, or pixelation at all that I've been able to see. We have uh, Skype for HoloLens, uh, which is in beta release. Um, and we can use this for our usual uh, communication and collaboration. But what is really powerful of this is the, uh, the remote assistance side. So uh, imagine if you, you have uh, field technicians uh, out doing work um, who might not have full experience to be able to uh, fix problems. You could have senior technicians back in an office environment. 
the field technician has a, a hollow lens. They can Skype the uh, senior technicians back in the office and the senior technician is able to see exactly what the, uh, the field tech is seeing. But in addition to that, the senior technician is able to draw holograms on, onto the environment that the field tech is looking at, as well as have a real-time conversation. So you can have this, this guided and remote assistance and, and take people through things that they're not sure. So that uh, includes checking work that they've done. So the, uh, the big wigs have a, a higher level of assurance that things are being done properly. But it also reduces your cost of, of having senior people out in the field and reduces the time in, in fixing things. So coming from the rail background, I can see some massive uh, applications of, of this. I, uh, I actually had a, before my partner came to Sydney, I had a Skype conversation using the HoloLens uh, when she was back in, in Melbourne. And um, I was able to show her where I was staying uh, and the view from where I was staying. Uh, and then we had a bit of fun with it. And I stood in front of the mirror because you remember with the HoloLens, the receiver of your call is only seeing what you're looking out at. But standing in front of the mirror, she was able to see me wearing the HoloLens and then we had a little bit more fun with it and uh, I pinned her Skype video to the microwave. I think the possibilities are pretty unlimited. It's most useful for instructional, collaborative and social scenarios. Anything where you can say, hey, how do I do this? Help me wire up this light up card. Anything that's DIY. Anything where you say, let me show you. So we all use Skype, we love Skype, and Skype on HoloLens is a communication tool. Skype on HoloLens, we can actually take someone who's remote from you, bring them into your space, and let you experience that together in real time. Everybody has had something in their house that they've tried to repair and didn't quite know how to do. So Skype on HoloLens, the other person does not need to have a HoloLens. They could be on a tablet or a computer. And we both can add things to the world together. As soon as they answer, they can draw on surfaces and they can add images and move them around. And I also have those tools. For the light switch, when you try it and the light turns on, you know you succeeded. That's when Skype on HoloLens makes the most sense. You can see the, the application of the remote assistance there. I've also got applications in en engineering and design and uh, collaboration around that. Uh, this next video uh, is a great example. Dan is still doing all of this work in Maya. He's leveraging his experience as an industrial designer. Now, one of the great things about HoloLens is that you can still see the real world and all of the objects in it and you can overlay them with precise holograms. So let me show you what we mean. Real life mode. Oh my gosh. So what this allows us to do is make changes directly on the motorcycle and see them in real time. Load orange. All right, that looks pretty nice. I think I like the blue one a little bit better. Load blue. Another thing I can do is add interaction points directly on the motorcycle and make changes to it. So let me update this mirror real fast. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's bring it back just a little bit. All right, that's nice. You can see how Dan can lean over the bike exactly where the rider's head would be so that he can evaluate if those mirrors are in the right position for the right. See from that that um, prototyping is uh, no longer necessary. The, the usual way of visualising a, a design on a 2D screen or on a, a, a piece of paper um, is now replaced by a hollow lens being able to overlay a design on a, a real object and, and look around that object, uh, see how it fits, rather than the usual cycle of sending a design to have a prototype built and waiting for that to come back 
perhaps finding that something doesn't quite fit, doing a redesign, and then the cycle continues. So there's massive uh, savings to be gained in, uh, in cost and time and, and getting a design into production. Similarly, the application of HoloLens technology in architecture, building and renovations has, ma has uh, massive benefits. And uh, as a real example of that, um, we're having some renovations done here at SSW. Uh, and the design was done and the builders started building and then it was realised that one of the rooms was too small. So that had to be torn down and uh, redesigned and now they're building again. But with a, a hollow lens uh, and being able to apply an architectural design to the space that we want to use, you could walk through that space and get a sense for whether uh, a room was too small uh, and therefore yeah, massive time and cost savings to be had there. It's hard dealing with shapes and spaces and light and they dream in 3D and then you need to translate this design into a set of 2D documents. HoloLens present a completely new paradigm. Trimble provides design solutions for architects and structural engineers. Anything that involves getting dirty is our business. Literally hundreds of enterprises can be represented on a job site. Today, the best way those companies have to interact with each other is uh, paper, paper drawings. But people aren't good at visualizing 3D. Microsoft HoloLens is a head-mounted self-contained computer that lets you see holograms in the real world. You get the physical model as a, as a focus point for the team to collaborate around. And you get the hologram with the flexibility, with the ability to run quick iterations. You'll see how we've brought in the courtyard that you suggested. You see that mouse go off the screen and into holographic space, and you're then interacting with the hologram with the mouse. The thing that we can do for architects is really give them much higher confidence around decision making. One way we can do that is we can allow them to literally immerse themselves in the scene that they're building and see street side, how the building's going to look. Visualizing design data in the context of the real environment is a much better way to make sure that the design is implemented correctly on site. Microsoft HoloLens allows you to collaborate with somebody regardless of distance like they were there. Hello there. Hey Igor, where they're trying to put this door, there's a beam behind here. I'm looking at this beam. We're interacting with it about a problem that we can see and being able to solve that problem with all the data that we need in front of us in real time. When I'm talking about enterprise construction, I always compare it to people trying to make music together. Each one of them is contributing to the harmony, but they all should be completely sync. My gray hair says I've been doing this for a while. I've seen a lot of these uh, new things come and go. And I expect in five years, we'll all be interacting with the world with this kind of technology. Yeah. Great way of, uh, of being able to communicate complex information very quickly. Uh, and I can imagine uh, if you wanted to get a, a building application through uh, council, uh, being able to show them on a HoloLens exactly what the design looks like in the, the environment where you want to build, uh, it's going to make things a lot easier. We've also got applications in education, and uh, this one is uh, uh, one that I can see being used at universities. With HoloLens, you can see the muscles on top of the skeleton all at the same time. You can bring them in and out and exactly understand where things sit. You can take any anatomical part and show any of it. You can move it around, you can make it kind of translucent so you can see through the outside, and that really helped me understand like how cardiac anatomy worked. I actually had a moment where I found the aortic valve, and it was the first time that I'd actually seen the aortic valve in relation to all the other anatomical structures. You know, it was a way of seeing it that you couldn't do with an actual heart.
Downloaded for HoloLens is, is sub 50 megabytes, so very small for a massive amount of information in it. It's not quite as detailed as this one that they're working on now, but nonetheless the, the detail is amazing. The so students no longer need to work with cadavers when they uh, want to look into further detail of uh, anatomical structures. And we have uh, ap another application of, of virtual museums around the world. So imagine uh, uh, museums being able to scan objects that they have uh, into a holographic space uh, and then release those uh, museum items for people to see all around the world. So people can study these uh, objects up close. Activate. Venus is known to have been an excellent basketball player. <laughs> uh, also applications in training. I was at um, the Microsoft Australian Partner Conference a couple of weeks ago and I was fortunate to meet uh, Rocky Heckman who is uh, Microsoft's uh, HoloLens guru for the Australia Pacific region. Now, he was there with someone from Saab in Adelaide and Saab have developed a training application for military personnel uh, to give them competency in clearing landmines in Southeast Asia. So these people can use a simulated environment using the HoloLens and get competency before going out into a, a life-threatening situation. Another concept that Microsoft are working on is holoportation and this is a, a, con a working concept at the moment but uh, it needs a little bit more hardware than uh, purely HoloLens. Hi, today Hi. we're going to show you an exciting new technology that could fundamentally change the way that people will communicate in the future. Imagine being able to virtually teleport from one space to another in real time. Hey Sergio, how does it feel like to be holoported? It feels great to be holoported. So if Sergio is to wear his HoloLens device, and I'm going to wear mine, we can see each other in full wow. 3D in real time. We can interact and communicate as if we're co-present. Sergio, can you walk around my space? Can you walk behind this chair? So we're doing everything to give the impression that Sergio and I are present in the same space. Sergio, let's just do a high five. <laughs> That's bye great. Bye. Thank you, Sergio future of communication there. We got the one with his daughter. Oh, the, of uh, the... Um, Him talking to his daughter. Oh, yes, that, that one continues on after, after this. After. Yeah, I clipped it at uh, the more business-like one, but that's uh, another good example. Uh, so the gentleman down the front was just talking about uh, <coughs> the same guy as talking to his daughter through a, a holoportation. Um, it's not all about, uh, about business, so you've got to have a bit of fun sometimes. So, uh, who here has played Minecraft? Yeah, we've got about, uh, about five people in, oh, six, a shy one down the front. I think a few people have done it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, check out Minecraft on steroids. To show our demo today, we're using a special camera. This display technique is like putting a HoloLens right on the camera itself allowing the entire audience to see the holograms. Now, this is a live demo with real working code. Let's show what it can do. You can play the Minecraft you know today on HoloLens. Sax grabbed his Xbox controller to play through a giant holographic portal into a 3D Minecraft world right on the wall. Even though I don't have a HoloLens, I'm able to play together with Sax from my Surface. Are you going to come join my game, Lydia? I'm in now. I see you, jumping around. One of the cool things about HoloLens is that it lets you display Minecraft virtually anywhere. You can get different perspectives on your Minecraft world. It's awesome to play with the controller, but could we show them something new, Sax? Sure. Let's take our experience off the wall and then put it on the table over here. Create world. I 
see Lydia way up there. As I run around and play, Sax can easily navigate and manip manipulate the world using his voice and his hands. He can walk around the hologram, pan around for different viewpoints, and even look inside. How cool is that? And Microsoft have also developed a game called Robo Raid. Robo Raid is the world's first mixed reality shooting game where you defend your home from a robot invasion. You're, you know, blending the digital world and the physical world in a way that's kind of unprecedented. We really want to get people excited about the technology, and there's no better way than while having fun. Every single different room creates new challenges, new types of levels for the game. It is fundamentally aware of your space. It knows where your walls are. You know, when you're shooting at the space around you, you're shooting your walls. It's not some pre-canned level. It literally is your room. You can hear when the wall is crumbling around you. So if you hear like a cracking sound next to you or behind you, you know, you should turn around and check out what's going on. And the sound that laser makes, it's, I, every time I hear it, I, I just, I grin from ear. You're taking gaming to a whole new level where uh, a gaming environment is different for every room that you move into. I can imagine uh, an Airbnb uh, opening up uh, a new arm uh, in the future maybe of, of uh, hiring out rooms for a, a certain number of hours for you to have a, a different playing experience. You can do it in your home. You can you do it in your home, but then you, you run out of rooms in your home and then you might want to try a, perhaps a warehouse or, yeah. Include your neighbours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's have a look at a, a demonstration. Have a look at the uh, Galaxy Explorer app that uh, Microsoft have put together. And excuse me for one moment, I've got another window open there that I need to close. This gesture that I'm using here is called the Bloom gesture, which brings up the Start menu and then the Air Tap gesture to place the window. I don't mind looking like a geek for this. <laughs> this is Share Your Idea, a community-based program where you come up with the idea and we build it in six weeks. We then open source it back to the community for you to learn, add new features, and make the experience better. We can't wait to see what you create. Uh, the, this entire application is uh, open source and available for everyone to have a look at. Earth in the center of your room. Great, this is our home, but we are a small part of a bigger picture, which is a small part of an even bigger picture. The Milky Way Galaxy is made up of hundreds have a look of at our solar stars system. and solar systems. You can learn and explore. Our solar system. This familiar representation of our solar that. system simplifies sizes Back a and distances bit. so that the sun and all of the planets can be easily seen at once. Okay. Click the if you'd like to check under your chairs, and a more realistic we have, uh, have two tickets for a, a couple of audience members to come up and to experience HoloLens. There you go. Uh, you sir, if you'd like to come up first. Nice. 
how well can you see the ground? Uh, very well. I, I can see you clearly Good. here and, and the ground quite clearly and I've got vision through the bottom of the, the glasses. see the uh, solar system there in front of you. Yeah. And you can walk walk around. And you notice the uh, the little white dot. That's your gaze pointer. So think of that like a mouse pointer. And then when you want to interact with something, you use the air tap gesture. That's right. Jupiter's almost two and a half times more massive than all of the other planets combined. Look around and find the large red spot that from Jupiter. Any angle that That's you a storm want so large that it's contained multiple Earths and has been side raging for hundreds of years. Click on that and then move your hand, up, uh, your gaze up a little bit. And then the, that's right, and then you can drag from left to right. So uh, air tap and pinch. And What James is doing here is he's uh, using the tilt and also the, uh, the zoom function. And then the grab allows you to place the object wherever you would like it to be. Interestingly, with the sun, At if you walk towards the sun old, and then the sun through it, that is the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> About five billion years from now, the sun will transform into a red giant and expand to engulf Mercury, Venus, and possibly the Earth. So the, the, the sun has a burning sound to it, and if you, you move around it, the spatial sound in the hollow lens uh, indicates exactly where it is uh, in relation to where you are. Let's, uh, let's get our, our next person down. Uh, what, what's your first impression, James? Um, I think with the software, knowing where your menus are, you could probably use some arrows to work out where you left it. Ah, OK. <laughs> yeah. so, losing stuff in the hollow space. I think it's interesting. Um, it's, uh, it presents very well. It's very clear. Yeah. Um, it doesn't feel particularly heavy, but I imagine it gets heavy after all. Yeah, after a while it does. But again, my first impression was that the graphics quality of it is, is, is quite, quite astounding. Yeah. Uh, and the stillness of the objects, how, how did you feel yeah, they were? It went yeah. quite well, but I was also trying to keep very still in case, uh, to 
just getting used to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's right. quite impressive. Oh, awesome. Well, thanks Thank so you. much for coming up. Thank you, James. Thanks, sir. your name? Peter. Peter? Hi everyone. Okay. Um, over, over here is the solar system. Now you can, can walk around it and you notice there's a, a white dot in the middle of your, your vision. That's like your mouse pointer. And then, yeah, then when you want to interact with the device, hold your finger up and just, this is an air tap. The question was, where's Pluto? <laughs> and then when you use these controls, you, you uh, air tap and pinch and then move your hand. Yeah, so it's not not a completely. Yeah, it would be interesting to see in in future releases whether they expand that field of vision. Is it adjustable for your eyes, with glasses, and things like that too? So I have glasses and eyes. So so I wear glasses for um, upfront uh, close uh, computer work, uh, but I find I don't need to wear them with the hollow lens. It, it, it gauges where your pupils are uh, and adjusts the, um, the image to, to suit your vision. Uh, I'm not quite sure how far that goes with um, uh, if your, your vision is quite bad. It would be interesting to see uh, how other people find it. So um, you've, you've got the, if, if you look down to where the menu is and I think, and, and then click on the left hand arrow. Very left. Yeah. That gives you the whole solar system. Someone asked Pluto. Ah, there you go. Uh, so put the, the mouse pointer on the actual wood. Oh, no, you've got it. There. Pluto, made of ice and rock, was discovered in 1930 and was originally considered to be the ninth planet in the solar system. Pluto is small, only about two-thirds the size of our moon. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union reclassified Pluto as a dwarf planet after the discovery of other similar objects in the outer solar system. Uh, th th this interaction is if you walk around and, and place it. Uh, I'll grab the mic. Thanks. What's your first impression, Peter? Um, I won't be running out spending three thousand um, dollars. It's um, the way it's in the space is quite interesting. I'm, I'm surprised how narrow the, the vision or the augmentation is. I was yeah. One of the things I was wondering about. So yeah, the the further you get back, the the wider the field of, of view you you have. Um, yep. So you can have quite a large screen in 
in front of you as long as you're a reasonable distance away from it. Yep. And how are you finding the, the stability of the, the mm, objects? It's actually you... very still, yep. Yeah, I haven't noticed the move at all. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming up. Pleasure. Thank you. I didn't think it was too heavy either. Now we're going to get on and have a look at how you can get started with HoloLens development. And uh, as I said before, I'm going to take you through the demonstration that I showed right at the beginning of the presentation. What you're going to need to, uh, to get started is uh, Visual Studio 2015 Update 3. Uh, you'll need the HoloLens emulator and uh, Unity HoloLens Technical Preview. So you, you don't need a HoloLens to actually start HoloLens development, the, uh, the emulator is, is quite good for starting out. It doesn't do the spatial mapping side of things, but allows you to interact with uh, holographic objects and, and do the coding around that quite effectively. There's six fundamental building blocks to uh, HoloLens applications. They have world coordinates, which is your position in the world have gaze input, uh, which you saw on the, uh, the demonstrations and the guys who wore the, the HoloLens, the, the little white dot in the middle of the, the screen or the mouse pointer. And there's the gesture input, so the air tap and the bloom gestures. Uh, voice input, uh, speech recognition is built into the device. You have spatial sound and spatial mapping. But today we're just going to look at the uh, gaze, gesture and voice input. And they're also known as GGV. And they're the three primary inputs for HoloLens. So gaze input is the, uh, the primary or first form of input and used for targeting and you can si consider that like a, a mouse pointer. It tells you where the user's looking and uh, you determine the user's intent from, uh, from the gaze. The gesture input uh, allows you to interact with holograms uh, using your hands, but you can also get an optional clicker device. And then we have the voice input, which allows you to directly interact with holograms using voice commands. The great thing about uh, voice commands, it allows you to uh, traverse complex interfaces. So you don't have to go through multiple layers of, of menus to get to something. If you program uh, a voice command in, uh, it's a much more natural way for a user to, uh, to interact with the device uh, and they have a greater user experience as a result. So we're going to go through, uh, first of all, Unity. And uh, then we're going to look at the Visual, Visual Studio classes for the, uh, the demo, and then look at the, uh, the HoloLens emulator for the demonstration as well. Hey everybody, and welcome to HoloLens, a world where anything is possible. This is part two of the presentation.